Welcome to Desk of Lady Ada. Hey everybody. Thought it would be nice to do a little Sunday stream here from the Desk of Lady Ada. You are back, and they're gonna like that. Da 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 She has some power supplies. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you. Snap! Don't touch that dial, because we're gonna be doing some fritzing tonight. Uh, that's what I thought I would just hang out and do, since I just uh, finished a board we're gonna put in next week. We'll go to the overhead and we talk about it. Yeah. So um, I have some other feathers here, but the new feather that I just finished is the ESP32 feather over here. Maybe I'll zoom in a little bit for the close upness. Um, so this has the ESP32 uh, module here, and uh, it's quite a, quite a tight fit. The module fits like right in between the pads, but it does fit, uh, and you can even use stacking headers and such, and um, has a standard feather pinout, so it, you know you can use it with all of our wings and shields and adapters. So that's really good stuff, and um, you know you can use it with the battery. Plug in the battery, and you know, probably blink or something. I think that's the the demo. Look, might yeah, there you go. It blinks a little bit. So you have a built-in battery charger. So yes, this is the ESP32, and we even have like a really nice matte solder mask on it. So this is going to go in the store later on this week. But before I put things in the store, I'd like to write up um, a little guide for them, and also have um, the fritzing file, which also makes doing the documentation a lot easier for me, um, because it's actually faster and easier to make a you know a fritzing graphic and then use fritzing software to make the diagrams for the tutorial than to take the photographs. And also, I actually think the fritzing diagrams are usually very much clearer than the photos. First question of the night, do these ESP32 boards of a feather flock together? They do. Cool. We we're got that out of the way. Hi, we're friends. So I thought, let's just, um, it's a, you know, I used to do fritzings. You know, we had, like, last, about a year ago, we had, like, a huge fritzing. Like, fritzing blitzing. It was a fritz blitz. And we, I went through, and Phil B and I did every single board that Adafruit manufactures. And now, like, that we caught up, we have, like, one or two boards that we missed because people, trust me, people let me know. Um, but other than those, we're, as we release boards now, we, put, um, we make the fritzing object, and um, we put the files on GitHub, so we're, like, all caught up, and that's really nice. So I could go to the... Computer. So for those who are interested in Feather, um, you can check out our Adafruit.com Feather page, which shows all of the different boards available. And we have just like dozens and dozens of different boards. And what's nice about all of these is that whether you're using our, our Blue Fruit or LoRa or um, Wi-Fi or uh, NRF52 or you know Cellular or ESP32, um, you know they're all compatible with each other, so you can use of all, all of our wings so what I really like is you know like I'm really tired of making like TFT shields for all the different Arduino so I just have like one TFT feather wing and uh, you know Ethernet feather wing and so now you can add Ethernet to like the ESP32 or you can um, add a display or a real-time clock or like a terminal block or or LEDs or all that stuff so I'll be designing more feather wings soon including a bunch of sensor feather wings but I wanted to get the ESP32 out first Question, how long does it take you and your team to design a feather? 
It depends. Um, the ESP32, actually, we started many, many, many months ago, but I waited. I wanted to wait until the Arduino core was more solid, and it's really good now. Um, just about everything works. Um, I have a, um, like, the, the way I actually test it. So here's another nice thing. If you have, because, you know, I have all these wings, and I have them in this bin, you know. Okay, follow up right whatever. after that. Yeah, what's up? You're going to make a Huzzah 32 Express? I might. I was actually thinking about it, but I'm not... I'm not sure yet. It'll probably be a Metro, not an Express, because the Express are like, they have a, they, they kind of do this micro Python thing, circuit Python thing. Um, so I'll probably make a Metro of some sort. Um, but I don't know if it'll be, you know, a special circuit Python version or just like an Arduino shape. But I'm having all of these um, feathers and then in my um, big folder, uh, hold on, feather wings. I have um, a spreadsheet. So this is actually how I kind of determine whether a feather is ready to dis, um, be released, is I have all of the feathers here. So, you know, the 32-4 series, the M0 series, ESP8266, Wicked, the Teen-C adapter, ESP32, NRF52, which was released, and a 328P that I'm, I'm working on. And, um, I have here on the left all of the different, um, kind of on my head, but all the different um, wings from OLED, GPS, LoRa, TFT, Relay, Charlie, um, you know, and some that are under design, like the Dot Star and Crypto and Joystick and Sensor. And so then what I do is I, I do a, a cross check of all of the feathers with all the boards, which is insanely time consuming. But you know, for the ESP32, I just kind of go through and like, I start at the top and then, um, you know, go through and, and, and test them all. And basically when I get to everything being okay, like here I got, everything's okay except IRQ um, usage with the MP3 feather wing doesn't work. And it's like, it's definitely something in the Arduino core uh, but I think it's good enough to release even with that. I'll just warn people, hey, you can't use IRQs. You have to like manually um, feed the buffer when using the 1053 chipset. Okay. Which silicon version are you using for this feather board? And uh, does it break out all the pins on this module? It breaks up pretty much every pin. Um, there's a couple pins that aren't broken up because there's like special usage pins. Um, like for example, we have at one, there's a couple pins on the ESP32 that are input only, which is a little... Mm. But, uh, so, you know, one of those input-only pins is used to monitor the battery voltage. I don't expose that pin because it's input-only. It's not that useful. I mean, it's useful, but, like, I'd rather expose an, an output input pin or an analog pin. Um, but every pin that isn't a special pin is exposed, and there's a couple pins that aren't, but they're, they're pins that are used for, like, boot status. Probably best off not to expose those. Okay, uh, Greg, who's always helpful in the chat, said there, uh, SimCom has a new Sim 868. Is that so? Yeah. And then also, I can answer can the next one. Can you go to the overhead? Yeah. And then also... Uh, Does it look like this? Hey, <gasps> hey Greg. Happy birthday. Um, so next up, I'll answer this one. Um, any possibility of a bare board without the ESP232 module? I got a few modules early on. The breakouts they came with were lame and not cool like feathers. Well, thank you, John, for that. But we don't do that because what will happen is when people get those and they destroy them, we're on the hook. And if it doesn't work, yeah. troubleshooting, that's really hard. I, here's what I do instead of having a breakout board. I mean, I do have a breakout board design for the ESP32 that's kind of like a, just a you know, basic breakout that has all the pins. For like when you're just like, look, I, I really want to have the smallest possible board. Um, th th I'd rather just make my PCB designs open source and then people can just download them from GitHub, send them to Oshpark. Yeah. You could Oshpark it up. Yeah, just <laughs> Oshpark it up or send it to your favorite PCB house. I'd rather do that than... Just take off our logos and everything. Don't do that. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I think that's, that's fair. But uh, that makes more sense because mostly if people... I used to sell breakouts, but it turns out like not many people bought them. People didn't understand that you have to solder it yourself. It was very confusing. Yeah, customers and would buy a bare board and I, they're I like, I got ripped it. off. I can't believe you guys. Yeah, and it was like the same price as Oshpark. So just, you know, that way you just get it however many you want, and it's often even cheaper. Okay, is a data sheet published for the um, 32? Whatever documentation there is, it is published. Um, Espresso doesn't have the same kind of data sheets you may be used to um, when you are using 
you know, chips from like TI. Life or, always doesn't give you a data sheet. Yeah, a quote from Lady Ada. You do, you do get there. You know, there's more documentation coming out, which is really nice. But it's it's not like you know the SAMD data sheet that I've been like neck deep in, where every register pretty much is documented and every you know process and procedure. And there's like a full there's full example code and like you know um, layer like middleware code for everything. Um, the SP32 is basically released as like, here's a working code base, and here's some information and stats. Um, but anything that's on the Espresso page, we're going to be using, what we have right now is this version zero silicon, because that's all we have. But when we get the version one, we'll swap it out. Okay, we're going to hold questions, so you can jam out on Fritzing, yeah. and we'll leave some time for questions at the end. Yeah, of course. Okay. But always feel free to help each other in the chat room. That's why it's there. Makers help makers. Yeah, thank you. Okay, let's, um, so yeah, so this is basically once I, you know, got to the point where I felt like the, the ESP32 was ready, and I could make a good, you know, I could test everything in Arduino, and it worked with all of my um, feather wings, I, um, it's kind of weird, it, I felt comfortable um, releasing it. So um, let's make this fritzing thing. So, um, you know, you can follow, actually, we have a learn guide on, if you want to make your own. It's called Make Beautiful Fritzing Part with Eagle to Fritzing. And when was this written? I don't know if there's a date on it. I think it was 2016-ish. But it basically is going to do the same procedure I'm about to go through, showing you how to make a, a beautiful um, design. You do have to install a bunch of software and fonts, um, but follow the guide. Uh, I wish more people would follow this guide. Um, so please do, because uh, we put a ton of work into it, uh, Phil B and myself, mostly Phil B, um, to get the parsing working beautifully. And it works so, so well, and yet I still see um, kind of marginal fritzing, like hand-drawn fritzing objects. You don't have to. If you're using uh, Eagle Cat, which a lot of people are, um, you can very easily uh, turn it into these uh, beautiful designs. So let's, let's see that occur. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is get your feather board and um, in your you know when you when you cl get cloned you get like all of this stuff and um, in the fritzing test folder wherever you want to put it you put the board file I'm going to rename this to be Adafruit ESP32 feather because actually is that the name I use what did I use the Huzzah32 So that way it shows up in the in the metadata. And another thing that you want to do is in the board view, make sure that all of the pads have names that are correct. Sometimes it's like enabled like net one or net two. And it's best if they all have like real names, which they seem to here. That looks good. Okay, then, um, so I run a little script that comes with um, the repository called RunPy. And um, this, this actually does the thing where it basically opens up EagleCAD then exports the um, file for you. So you can see it opens up Eagle and then it like grabs all the data about what's in the file and then exports it. And then what's neat is now it fills in all of these um, folders with parts. So for example, in parts SVG contrib um, breadboard, so that's the breadboard view, which is like the kind of the overall look. So what's neat is it's pretty close. Hold on, let me, uh, it's not like being small. Um, so it's pretty close. So I'm missing the module because it doesn't know about it. So like every subcomponent here is an existing part. So if I um, ungroup this, you can see like the JST connector is like a part, and then the um, micro USB connector is a part, and this this chip is a part. So all these subparts um, already exist because I've made so many feathers that I've created all the subparts. But we have to make a subpart for the ESP. 32 and um, I'm a terrible artist, but I'm an excellent thief. 
So what I'm going to do is go to um, Pig Hicks, who um, we've hired to do a bunch of our feathers. And so we often recycle the, when we hire him to make these really beautiful pinouts, um, we end up using his really nice vector graphics. So in this case, I'm going to snag. He's got, ooh, where is it? I totally checked. Hold on. It was the Pig Hicks flu, Fluo. Fluo? Yeah. This thing. Oh, no. Hold on. Hmm. When I visit the page. Hold on. I will find it. Oh, there you go. Sorry, he moved it to this page. Okay. So he made this like really beautiful object for the ESP32, like right here. And his stuff is open source, it's Creative Commons, so I get to use it, which is super sweet. So I'm gonna download the pinout. And then download the PDF. And you can see, you like literally can see all the objects rendering. And let's put it on the desktop. And then, now it's gonna be fun. So I have to get this object out, which is always fun in vector graphics because like vector graphics, let's try uh, Inkscape. I don't remember if Inkscape can open up a PDF, but we'll find out. Okay. Let's see if it can do it. Sometimes it like, Crashes? Yeah, not responding. Oh, there you go. Showed up. So let's go in here. So yeah, there's this beautiful drawn object. So what is this? Oh, I just selected it, so that's nice. So I'm going to cut this part and then I'll make a new Inkscape object and paste this in. So now I, now it's at least separated. Yes, it's nice. It's got like the logo and everything. So let's save this. And, um, oh, I already, cause I was editing stuff. So here is all of the parts. So I'm going to call this ESP 32 room, or maybe it's called the room module. Let's see, what did I call it? Room 32. So I'll call this room 32 and that's it and it's actually kind of nice because like okay i just have this beautiful vector you know you can zoom in and it's like ooh, so vectory i love vectors so let's close this we don't need this anymore so if you go to um the fritzing in like here no oh, hold on there's like a lot of subparts so subparts is all the subparts and um for example uh, you know, if I want the subpart for Bluetooth module, so like every part has its own, um, subcomponent in vector graphics. And like, you know, if you spend a little bit of time making this beautiful thing, you get to recycle it as many times as you want. So I've made the room 32 and for the script that I just ran, uh, I couldn't find a couple things, including this room 32 skinny. That's what I called it. So I'm, I'm going to make an alias because you can have multiple parts under one name, which makes sense because like sometimes you'll have like one part but different footprints for it, but you want the drawing of the part to be the same. So at the end of here, I will make room 32 the same as room 32 underscore skinny. Room 32 underscore skinny. So now it like aliases. So when I run the script again, this, this time it'll say, okay, I found that subpart, room skinny, and it mapped it to room 32. And then if I um, revert by like, you know, basically reload from disk, did it work? It 
Worked-ish. Oh, so this part isn't really the right size. That's okay. We can, um... It's a little bit of a trick. What I do is I manually resize it, and then I, I paste it back in. So the subparts are supposed to be, like, one-to-one -one true size. But, uh... Sometimes the drawing that Pig Hicks does aren't like 100% like perfect sizing. So I might have to like do a little manipulation here. Oh, another thing you can do is you can set up the um, units to be millimeters. And then if you know the actual size of the module, So if you're like, oh, the module is like, you, know, you lock it and then you can say, I think it's 18 millimeters exactly. So now this is like, you know, the, the true size and then you just have to reposition it. What's neat is it actually um, lines up perfectly with the pads because it's, you know, again, it's a one-to-one -one component. Let's bring it down a little bit. I think that lines up perfectly. That's so nice. Okay, so. You I've lost like all of my interface. Okay, so next up, I can put this over here again. Looks pretty good. I can make um, this background the PCB color. I can just select it and I'm going to make it black. Oh, hold on. It's, um, I have to ungroup it again and now I can select it and make it black. That's nice. And I can do some little repositioning like I'm going to just move that over there and then I can, um, let me move this silk screen. Let's move this up a little bit. Okay, I'm into it. Right, this looks pretty good, I think. So that's actually like the hardest part, honestly, is getting, um, this, uh, the sub parts in and then just like making sure like, you know, they all show up in the right location. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this, delete this, paste it back so it's the right size and then resize page and save it. So next time I use it, it will be the right size. And then I'm going to also resize the page here. Okay. This looks good. All right. So I actually keep the Inkscape thing um, open in the background because as I'm going to be doing more stuff, it'll regenerate. And this way I just always have it open. I can always just save over the previous file because it's like, you know, I don't want to like have to redo what I just did with like all the, tw you know, tweaking. Like you do have to do a little bit of tweaking. So the next thing that I do is I do um, the parameters. And I'll tell you why. This is like a little bit of a hack, but it does work. So the next part after the breadboard is I do the schematic. And when you look at the schematic, so the, the generator does its best job to try to figure out like what pads you want and where. Um, the problem is, is that it kind of puts all the power pins up here and then it kind of puts them in alphabetical order, which is okay, but what I would prefer to have is to have it kind of look like a feather where the pads come out like on the left side and the right side in the order that you see them. Because if you're using schematic view, it'll be a little bit easier to use. Um, and I've actually found the easiest way to do that is to edit the parameters. 
and the params actually, if you go, it's an XML file and you can see it, it, it has um, the list of all the um, connections called power, ground, left and right. And you can also um, add and remove signals if you want. So for example, um, the mounting holes, on purpose they show up in here, but I actually um, put them in their own group so that they don't appear in the schematic, but they appear as part of the um, breadboard layout. And then let's um, do the pads on the left-hand side. So opening up the PCB, so this is what I consider the left-hand side. So it goes reset, um, three volts ground. So let's find reset. Here we go. Reset three volts. You just rearrange all the connections. No, oh, these are surface mount parts. I don't know why sometimes the connectors that are part of the micro USB show up. Okay, I'm gonna um, yeah, I'm gonna do a question because yeah, sure. uh, shout out to Chris Young. Okay. Um, next time I use it, you said uh, is that a hint that there's gonna be other versions planned? Of what? Of the Feather ESP32. You gonna do different versions one day? No, I think I think this is probably the only version. You're not gonna ship this and say I immediately have a new plan. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. okay. Uh, so next up, all the analog inputs. So A0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in order. Then S clock, MOSI, MISO. So S clock, MOSI, MISO. So this will just, they'll just put them in the right order. Um, RX, which is the same as, um, oh, RX is, that's a pin actually. IO 16, IO 17, and then IO 21. So 21. 16, 17. Okay, so that's the right, the, sorry, the left side. So now let's do the right side. And the right side is also top to bottom. So starting from over here, we have bat enable USB. So bat enable USB. Um, 13, 12, 27. And one question. Yeah, what's um, that? Greg says, uh, are the right holes partly covered? Because that uh, would potentially change the feather boxes that Noah and Pedro are doing. No. No, you can get there. They're good. The module is exactly, I mean, you can even see it in this drawing. The module just comes exactly up to the edge, but you can still fit like stacking headers or female headers if you want. Like it's just, it's exactly the right size. Right, cause it's like um, 18 millimeters. Uh, num lock, have num lock on. Your cases are fine, everybody. It's like exactly like points. It's like point, you know, you have like, you know, it's point seven oh eight, but that there's wiggle room within it, so you don't you don't notice it. it it's essentially. Um, I was talking about the mounting exactly. holes. Oh, these mounting holes, um, they are somewhat covered. You could file them down or drill them through because the antenna actually doesn't cover them. But yeah, yeah. you would just you just use these mounting holes. Yeah, you can use a little file and. You can file them, or you use can a use smaller, a smaller, smaller. Um, okay, yeah. so sorry about that, folks. I, I see what you're saying now. Yeah, 13, so this is 13, 12, 27, 33. 27, 33, 33, sorry, 12, 27, 33, 15, 32, 14. and then SCL and SDA. And then this is the, um, the non-connect. So I'll put this, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll still leave it here. It goes here in between. So that's the parameters. So before when we opened up the schematic, um, 
um, you know, it looked like this, and all the pads were kind of like out of order or whatever. So when we run the tool again with the new parameters, it rearranged them. So now they're only on two sides. So we have to do only a couple little things to fix this up. So let's ungroup this. So first up, this is, um, this is a non-connect pin. And then next up, I like to move these down so that they like, you know, they do the right thing or matching up with the feather. Because like the feather has like the, the, there's like the, you know, the USB connector here. So this way it's actually like what you look, what it looks like when you look at it. It's kind of cool. Um, so I'll save this and then I'm going to save this over because it got regenerated. So I'm like, okay, let's replace whatever I created before. And then there's only one last thing that's the PCB. The PCB is like never an issue. It's just like, it's just like this. The only thing you can do is um, sometimes it, um, you need to resize it to kind of make it the exact right size. But other than that, it's actually kind of hard to see because of the, um, the background color is white. But if you make the background color, some other color you can see that the holes and the, the mounting pads and you know the connectors show up. So that can help you if you're using this in a breadboard. Um, you can use it in a breadboard and then have the, um, all the connections come through and like the holes and everything so it mounts nicely. I personally don't use it for, um, I don't use fritzing in that way, but you know, if you're gonna do it, you might as well do it right. You wanna, uh, you wanna wait to the end for some questions? You wanna sprinkle some in? Sure, I can do a couple, okay. and then I'll, I'll how many, wrap it up. How many feathers could you stack power requirements and, you know, using one source? You, I mean, it depends. Again, it is a power requirement thing. Um, all the feathers, you have a 500 milliamp power supply, but, like, if you're stacking, you know, LEDs and I2C things, and they're all using different addresses, and there's no pin conflicts, you can stack as many as you want. Most of them are I2C. So they will have address conflicts, but if you have like different I squared C ones, you should be good. But the idea was not to have to stack more than three. So like the idea from Feather came from like the, the seeing a lot of these like teensy duino or like stacky boards. But the problem was that each board was so small and so minimal that to get anything worth stacking, you had to stack like six things. And I'm like, it doesn't make sense to have like one thing just for the power supply, one thing for USB, one thing for the main chip, one thing for like a couple of indicators. Yeah. Like it, it was like, before you knew it was like this thick. So the idea here is for the feather line, you can stack, you know, as many as you want if they don't conflict. But in reality, I think people should probably stick to like a feather and maybe two mm. wings. Do you ever stack two feathers? You mm. can't stack two feathers because the main chips would, would conflict. You're supposed to have like one main board and then just like you wouldn't stack an Arduino on top of an Arduino. It's kind of weird. We'd stack shields on top. I've okay, seen, so now that you're... I've seen plenty of projects where people... <laughs> you should see some of the projects I've seen. Yeah. So now that we've got that done, we can actually um, put the parts into fritzing and, and check it out. So you want to actually open up your documents folder. And then in fritzing, this is... You, can, you don't have to do it this way, but this is kind of how we do it. Just, you, instead of going through the tool, and in parts and in user, you drag the config and SVG parts over. I'll copy them over. And there's the parts that you just created. And then you run um, Fritzing, which I actually have on the desktop because it doesn't install as like an installer. It installs just like this is zip. And it'll give you this complaint. It'll be like, I don't know what the hell this part is. That's fine. Because we just made it. It's it's like a newborn part. Um, Welcome to the world, little part. Hello. So now you can find your part um, by typing in, you know, for example, ESP32. Oh, wow, there's... The icon came out weird. Oh, cool. Something, like, totally didn't work out here. That's neat. Yeah, like the schematic came out, but I must have saved over or saved in the wrong place. This is the schematic, so that's correct. PCB is correct. This breadboard is totally not correct. 
That's kind of cool. It's just like a floating module. So let's not save. And let's close this. And then let's delete this. I'll get back to this in a second. Let me check my SVGs again. Yeah, Eric says you could stack the main boards unless the bootloaders would cause pins to short on um, VCC and ground. I wonder why it didn't work. Let's try grouping everything. Hacker stacker. Let's see what happens. It's kind of cool. It just like exploded. There's ways to like manually do it, and uh, hopefully I won't have to, but we'll see. So I don't need this folder anymore. Okay, back to parts user. I think is it parts? Yeah, user SVG contrib. Let's try again. If it still doesn't work. Well, it's in beta. <laughs> yeah, it's in beta. It's gonna be in beta for life. Let's see. Ooh, yeah, it's still not, it didn't like something about this. It's doesn't like the neat. module? Oh. Oh, man. Wow. Something horrible happened. That's so cool. Yeah, it doesn't like it. Okay, here's what I'm going to try doing. This is actually the fun part. So, like, um, whenever you create, like, this, especially, like, new weird things, um, what you can do is you can still edit it from within here. I'm going to go into this place and I'm going to remove the module and then I'll add it later, which is terrible. We'll see. So uh, Alan works. suggested Inkscape page size. That might be doing it. Oh yeah, like page size is weird. Thank you, Eric. That is true. Oh, you know what? I must have had it selected. That's why we do live shows. Yeah. See? Oh man, someone has a Emacs burn. Great OS just needs a good text editor. Ooh. Damn. Ooh, that's Emacs burn. How much code have you written? All right. <laughs> oh man. Okay. I like 780, 780 GitHub repos, so. Ooh. It's working out for me. All right, so I, I resized. Yeah, it probably was the Inkscape page thing. Good catch. This is why you should group and then and then run yeah. that command. Okay, Thanks, so Alan. Let's, Let's close fritzing. We're in this it's together. Freaking out. And then, yeah. The dink. We made a joke that like my entire life is just Windows alert sounds. The dink, the donk. The dink, the Dude, donk. It's most of my life. Most of my life <laughs> is listening to your USB stuff enumerate. Okay. So thanks to, um, what was the person's name? Alan. Congratulations, Alan. Um, you were correct. It was a missing, uh, missized page. It's pretty neat, because I've never done that before. It's the first time for everything. So now we have this wonderful, beautiful part. But one of the things that Zilla said is it does, it's not like snapping into the breadboard. And there's a couple other things that are missing, like it doesn't have a description or whatever. So let's, um, let's edit this part. Ooh. That was really weird. The icon came through. Add a capacitor. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's still being very... Weird. I'll tell you what. I'm going to, um, on the off chance it matters, I'm going to delete this. Sometimes it, no, this is good and empty. I'm going to delete these. I don't know, we'll see. And then let's, um, this is my fritzing parts. I'll fix my breadboard view here. Okay, resize. Sometimes if the graphics get very complicated, like fritzing does kind of choke a little bit. We'll see. Let's try again. 
I've never had it not open in the editor. That's a new one. Bam. That's so cool. Error reading file. File for ASP has a feather, feather not found. Maybe duplicate the file? Rename it something? Yeah. Get rid of the underscores. <laughs> Dude, it's all underscores. Yeah, I could rename the file. Um, get rid of the user stuff. Yeah, maybe I can. 8.3. I can rename it. Maybe it's too long? I would try it. I mean, let's just call it ESP32. <coughs> Get rid of the underscore. No, the underscore you gotta have. Have it's, to? Yeah, you have to. Why? Because it's just part of the the. It's a you know. There's an official. We're breaking all the rules here. Thing. <coughs> Java. If there's anything that's breaking it, it's the um, that module because sometimes when you when you paste graphics into, um, if you paste graphics into Inkscape, it freaks. And then, contrib. Let's see what this is. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it doesn't like it. Maybe it's too long. Someone also mentioned uh, purge your temp folder. And then also, uh, yeah, the other folks Reboot. are suggesting the um, file system might be, the, the, the wording might be too long. I think that's what it is, by the way. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, to, yeah, I'm starting to edit things by hand. Okay. Let's see. So I renamed the files and I edited the, the XML. Yeah, I guess I've never made something with such a long file. I might actually have to go back and rerun the generator. Uh, when it generated, maybe it... No, there's something like... Run the generator. Temp. I don't know, let's delete my local temp. No matter how older I get, I am still You're stuck. Still I'm, st I'm still stuck with something called generator and XML files and vector graphics. I don't know if anyone used Macromedia generator. What's the warning? Because it's hard to see on the screen. It says um, this something with this temp file. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do because I've actually never seen this issue come up. So I want to get it back to a state that I'm I know about. So what I'm going to do is. I'm going to delete all this stuff, and then... Um, if you put the error message up, I can zoom in on it. No, yeah. I saw it. It was like, update a couldn't find file. Okay. Update a couldn't find file for the chat room. Yeah. This is fun. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a backup of my stuff. Anyhow, if it happens again, um, I can zoom in on it, and some of the folks in the chat might have some ideas. So I'm going to back up my params, and I'm going to back up my breadboard file and my schematic file. Because everything else I don't care about. And then I'm going to delete all of this and I'm going to rename it ESP32. I run the generator again. From the chat, two hardest things in computer science: naming things and cache eviction. Temp files, yeah, no, seriously. Sometimes you're you're got naming problems that are also temp problems. I had to write a garbage collector for Newton because it stored soups. That sucks. <sighs> soups. All right, so let's go to the params, and I can um, I can grab my params because that's not from power down to slash mount. So let's re do that. Okay, so that's fine. We run. 
And then maybe I'll, I'll make the breadboard um, without the, um, well, let's see some module appears. Yeah. I'm very, sus ah, I'm very suspicious of the, the module actually, because I've had, if like SVG is, you know, like a format and if this came in with a unfamiliar something something with an SVG, it can definitely confuse stuff. I think I like when you move this. background click okay. that's pretty much all I did then group this again okay so let's just see if this um, disappears somehow. Okay. Grab these files. That's normal. Almost ready. Leave the error message up next time it happens. I'm going to zoom in. Enhance. Well, it says error reading file. <clears throat> file for ESP, ESP32, ESP32 not Is there anything in app data local temp? Yeah, that's the, these, that's the, the fritzing file. Yeah. It's just neat because I've never seen that happen. First time for everything. I think it's, um, I'm very suspicious of the, the breadboard, so I'm going to edit the breadboard. Let's get rid of this breadboard. I'm suspicious of this item. Later. Because. Well, someone says off open thing. the software as admin. They think it's a permissions issue. I don't think, no? I don't yeah. think All that's right. it. Could be, but I'm a little doubtful. Yeah, it's weird that it, I can't, I've never had it can't, not find the file. It's a, that's a new one. Wow. Yeah, this is super cool. Yeah, I don't know. That's sad. I was hoping it would just like magically work. <laughs> well. You frag your hard drive. I don't know what to do. Um, so I'll probably end up spending another half an hour on this. It's not very interesting. To be continued, everyone. This is what it's like. Every day in every way. Yeah. It's a new one. Yeah. I don't think it's a permissions issue. I mean, I could run this as admin just for the heck of it. Is your hard drive? You know, I up? did recently update Fritzing, right? I think. Maybe. Rollback. No, it's just 2016, so I didn't update recently. I'm going to put um, Fritzing on a Mac. You want to open up on the Mac? Just eliminate some stuff? Um, we'd have to haul out a Mac and still fritzing on it. I'll bring one up right now. All right, if you want. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. I'll bring one up right now. I can do it. Very also suspicious. Of I can do it. Yeah, of the uh, I'll be right back. contrib file. <laughs> Is this contrib file full of lies? Yes. nothing in here. I'm going to try something stupid. 
which is to uh um, to do all sorts of stupid soon have, yeah i mean we're we're on a roll here so i'll also need a usb key yeah i know Someone says that contribute file. Don't trust it. <clears throat> I don't, but like I'm stuck with it. You know, what am I going to do? Why well, is the ESP repeated towards the end of their message? Yeah, we don't know. I don't know because I've never seen that one before. It's new, new and exotic. I hope I'm put. I think I'm putting it all in the right folder. It's been a couple weeks. Parts user. I don't trust these things. I need those. Trust no one. I trust nothing. Software, delete everything and try from scratch. No, it's like not even, um, I'm wondering if it actually has nothing to do with the file. I wonder if the file is a red herring because I have no changes to the file and it's still like this thing not found, but it has the, the schematic object. Maybe I'm not putting it in the right location. Weird. I made I made a metro a couple days ago and it worked um, flawlessly. No, you're not smart. No, it's like I'm gonna open up a browser. Data local temp fritzing underscore PE Yeah, it's like why does it not it says it can't find the file, but like it never copies them over either. What if I maybe I just put, oh, it deletes it. That's annoying. Burn it all down. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, this is 93B, and this is 93. Hmm. I'm gonna do something crazy. You do something crazy? What are you? Yeah. Okay. What are you doing? Whoa. <clears throat> Try to get that Mac on here. Okay. That's what I do. I'm gonna get this Mac on this screen somehow. This is gonna be weird. I don't know how to import. Well, you know what another option is? I could, um. I wonder what happens if I try to just open. Apart from here. Fritzing in. Just like 5,000 different part types.
Yeah, I don't know any other way of getting it into being a uh, mirror. Oh, hey. Be there, sir. That's cool. We'll be in a second. You know what? I'm going to try um, generating, because it's waiting to download. I'm going to generate a different part. Boom, now we got a Mac. All right, I've wanted to do this for a while anyways. Because uh, I have an idea on how I'm going to bring guests on. Yeah. And I think I can do it through another computer. Oh, hey, it's a cat. Yeah. Cat's like, what's cat going break. on? All right, so I'm going to try something similar and different. I'm going to try... Um, creating a different part. Like, I don't think it should make any difference, but whatever, what the heck, right? Can you add other components in Fritzing, just as a test? Like, bring up your Metro. Maybe Fritzing got thoroughly confused. Good. These are good suggestions. Thank yeah, you, everybody. Good suggestions. Okay, yeah, these are good suggestions. Okay, let me, uh, yeah, let me. <clears throat> Time to recompile Fritzing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we donate made money to Fritzing, but I, I think they just dropped they, off. They kind of, I think they all graduated or something. Okay, so let's just like, uh, yeah, let's open in my Fritzing library. I just made this Metro. Hey, Mustard, come here. Can be on the internet? Yeah, see, this is what, that's what normally happens. Like, the not freak out complaint. And Mustard. then it's like, lovely. Hey, buddy. He knows the internet. You know what, the cat, I don't think he can see green, but I think he can see green. Because he's like, there's a green screen, you're going to put me in front of the green screen. Yeah, he probably knows. So that's not it. I thought maybe, um, I could try running. We have to make this part anyways. So like, let's make this part. And, um, cause somebody told me like, hey, you're, you're missing this one as well. So that came out very nicely. No edits there. Schematic. We're doing science. Oh, I do have to change the uh, params. To get rid of the mounting holes. Okay, try rerunning it. <clears throat> Lovely, maybe I'll just. Okay, so then this part, put it in my user parts. So more have a footing folder. What's the resolution on this thing? Yes. Yes. Weird, yeah, it's not the part, it's just like, it's just Fritzing is just extremely upset. Fritzing is angry. That's cool, nothing's working. Neat. Something horrible happened with my Fritzing install. Maybe I should just download and reinstall Fritzing on this computer. That's sad. I wonder if I could Yeah, that's super weird. I don't know any other way of importing... Um, Fritzing's on the Fritz, unfortunately. Fritzing is on the Fritz. Maybe... Maybe well, I'm confused. Maybe I'm I Mac, you can always try it on there. So. Merge this. I'll try another folder. Because I'm kind of running out of options.
That worked. What'd you do? I tried, I tried another folder. Instead of putting it in the user folder, I put it in the... Maybe that was my mistake. Which folder did you put it in? The, um, I put it in the user folder before, and then this time I just put it in the main folder. Maybe it's weirdo permission thing. It can't get to that other folder. I don't know, but I'll just, I'll just continue where I was. Thanks, everybody, for this, this Windows intermission. Okay. You know what? This is. I, I'm glad that we don't pre-record all these because if if we did, people would be really frustrated. This is like, why people don't know. They're like, my no, they'd say like, oh, it's always so easy, and if I and if there's any problems, it must be me. But this is this is life. Okay, so unfortunately, I threw out everything, so I have to kind of go back. This is why like none of the. This is why nothing works. <laughs> pretty much nothing works. Okay, maybe I actually I, I might have I might have um, forgotten. Maybe that is the right folder and like. It kind of showed up, and that's why I was confused. Okay, so that's fine. So let's go back to what I was doing before. Now, well, yes. I want to... Put this here, and then I'm going to rename this correctly. So this is not the name. Adafruit Huzzah 32 SP32 Feather. And then I'll run the tool. Oh, I've got to, man, i got to edit like 15 things now. i got to undo my undos. Do you happen to know what resolution your, your main computer runs This is at? 720p. Okay. I know, because it's too small. <laughs> uh, fritzing to this and all packages. And this was room 32. I have this rename. I don't need it because I'm <laughs> going to reuse my old file, but next time I run this. Does a MicroPython or CircuitPython work on this board? There is a MicroPython port for it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is going. I think it's going to be MIT licensed too. If you're licensed, it is. Yeah. It is. Um, which is really nice. Shout out to Fred. So let's recycle. Actually, Fred from PyCom, shout out. Like, we uh, we communicated and we encouraged him to make uh, the PyCom stuff a uh, MIT license since that's what Damien, the MicroPython creator, put MicroPython under. So we thought that'd be cool, and he did it. Okay, I'm going to undo all my undos and redo them. And in my parts, under breadboard. Oh, for Kristen to chat, the 8266 versus this, there's a bunch of articles online where people completely are like, here's the differences. Yeah, it's like kind yeah. of a lot more parts and things and. Yeah, Bluetooth. Bluetooth. Cores. And um, hey, analogs. Friend. Oh, he's hiding behind the green screen. Oh no, green screen cat. Yeah, when he does that, hey. Oh, you can hear him. Hey, buddy. Hey. 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 Is he in my shelving? Yeah. Jerk. <coughs> oh, okay. uh, I'll answer this question. So, Rebecca, the MIT licensing means you can um, sell the thing and not sign an agreement and not be tied to a company when you use the code. So, before PyCon used a modified GNU. License and you had to agree to additional terms. And I, I scared the cat off, but then he um, he's over there now. He's vulnerable. Grab him. Stalk him. He knows. He knows. He really knows. Wow. Is he is he spooked? Yeah. All right. Well, why do he hide behind the thing then? Because he knows if I get a hold of him, he's gonna go on camera. It's true. Everything's okay. I'm not gonna put you on the internet. Okay. Cat doesn't want to use fritzing either. Attempt eight. I'm gonna zoom in on this. See what <coughs> what nonsense comes up. Let's see what nonsense comes up. I think I I think I resolved it. I'm in it for the error messages now. Yeah. Yeah, it's like okay, walking around so New York and all the digital signs always have error messages. Everyone loves taking those photos. <sighs> okay, it came up this time. So it's really interesting that before it like it showed up, but you couldn't edit it. But then like when I fixed, I fixed the folder location. It's kind of weird that it even came up at all. 
All right, so we have this, so that's good. And then we have our schematic that was all cleaned up, so that's good. So now we just have to like uh, tie things together. So the only things that I do is um, we have this like extra mounting hole, and it unfortunately thinks it's a part, like a thing you like a pad. So I delete it, and then same with this one, and then oh all the um. These mounting holes also showed up. These, they're like the mounting holes for the USB. I don't know why, sometimes it like thinks, oh, they're through holes, so like they're through hole pads. So you delete them. Um, for the folks who ask good uh, circuit design, PCB layout software, cheap or free, there's the online stuff from Autodesk. There's mm -hmm. also um, KiCad. Yeah. There's a free version of Eagle, but it's limited by all the things that or on the website that says what you can't do. <clears throat> and then, so the next thing I do is to make it plug into the breadboard, you have to turn it, all the pins into like uh, mail type pins. So under, um, under, what's it, sorry, connectors, you set all the pins to mail type and that way they plug into the breadboard. So once that happens, you can <coughs> see now it, it plugs in very nicely. And so when you connect to a, a connection in the schematic. Oh yeah, Altium. We had Altium on our show. Um, watch the Altium uh, CMO, Chief Marketing Officer interview. Nice yeah. fella. Ted. So the one last thing I have to do, so all these look, they actually work out quite nicely. The last thing I have to do is <coughs> When I, we, when I move all these pads around, it kind of gets confused a little bit. So what I do is I, um, I, I go through and I set the terminal point. It's a little bit of a hack. I don't know why this works, but if you set the terminal point, it kind of resets the location of um, each pad. And then your schematic pins end up in the right location. So on the left side, I have the terminal point be west. So that's like the end of the, the point. And then I'm going to rename this to be not connect. No connect. West. <coughs> yeah, I think it's just based on where the, the, the folder was supposed to be. I think it's always been in that one, but I think it moves it later to user, and that's where you delete it from. So I, kind of, I got things backwards. But I learned a lot about that error message. What's cool is in like exactly three days, somebody's going to be following the guide, have that error message come up, and I'm going to be like, oh, I know exactly. I know. I know exactly what it is. You can drop a time-coded YouTube URL. Yeah. Actually, the cool thing is that um, I needed to get another computer into um, our broadcasting system so I could do some experiments. And i just been uh, busy. Um, but it's been like on my to-do list forever. And uh, now I have uh, another video source. Mac, so I can potentially start having guests inside of Desk of Lady Ada. So this is neat. It's like I can, you know, draw a resistor or something from VBAT to A9. Oh, hold on. This <coughs> there you go. And then the breadboard it shows up and it has like these wires to let you know, hey, here's what you have to connect, and then you can. Um, fulfill those connections and it will say like hey good work you fulfilled those connections so that's kind of nice I think that's why schematic view is, is pretty handy so this is here oh wait sorry this one goes here and this one goes here yeah now it's all set what are you doing to the cat? Acting weird. he's acting weird? yeah uh oh well, I mean he's acting cat okay all right, so far so good though. So I'm going to export this. All right, they're gone. I will never see them again. He's back here. Yeah. 
Good work, if that's what you meant to do. No. Okay, well, I'm going to export this and save it, and then I'm done. So then you export the part. Once you get it to this point where you can export it, things become less annoying because now you don't have to deal with these files. Now you have it as an object. So now in my Fritzing library, I have this part. And what's cool is if you open this part up, like you rename it to be a zip, you can open it and like all of your files are in here. Cat break. Hey, hello. Cat, can you fix my files? I see you're making a fritzing. Run as yeah. administrator. Run yeah. as cat. So here this SVG actually gets um, put inside the zip. He's tired. He's, he's exhausted. He's like, what are you doing to me? So if you drag this out, I think you can't open it from within, but if you drag it out and then open it, let's see if it works. Oh, weird. Yeah, I think for things just super confused. Maybe uh, the icon will work. Nope. Weird. All right, usually it does. But I can commit this. Okay. Yeah. And now what you do is you delete all of your um, fritzing folder, the documents, because otherwise it'll keep complaining. So here under parts, I delete. Oops. I'll return. Delete this. And then when you run fritzing, it won't complain anymore because it doesn't have like these weird like half made zombie parts. And then you can open your part and just use it. Yes. All right. Success. Sometimes it takes time. We did it. We did it together. Yes. And you also got to take out this Mac. It takes a community to build a fritzing. Yeah. Probably should have looked at my guide. I probably had a note like, hey, don't make this mistake. But um, now we have this really lovely, beautiful um, feather file. So I can use this in the tutorial guide, which okay. I think will be sweet. All right. Shout out to everybody people. in chat. Thank you. People can make like PCBs from it, like like copper, and they can use the schematic. Lovely. And I don't keep the imported parts. Okay, that's that's completely it. That's that. I'm done. That was longer than expected to do to folder fun. And then I just delete all my like junk files. Maybe I'll clean up. Okay, we'll see everybody during the week. We'll try to do some more stuff. We'll probably have some live uh, factory stuff this week. And more. Yeah, I've got the, uh, well, I've got the ESP32 coming out, and then I have to do the Circuit Playground Express tester. That's on my desk. But we'll probably do, like, maybe a couple of ESP32 projects. Oh, pardon me. Is it tiny chip USB to serial? Yeah. Okay. All right. Bye, everybody.